Buenos días. Hoy tenemos un conferenciante que viene muy a menudo por aquí, por, eh, por este centro de investigación, pues, pues eh, digamos, participa activamente de, eh, en los proyectos que tenemos de estimación en áreas pequeñas, colabora con muchos de nosotros, es Tomás Hopsa, del Departamento de Matemáticas de la Universidad Politécnica Checa eh, en Praga. Bueno, Tomás empezó a venir por aquí casi cuando era estudiante de doctorado y, bueno, la cooperación lleva ya muchos, muchos años entre nosotros. En concreto, hoy no nos va a hablar de estimación en áreas pequeñas, pero sí nos va a hablar de modelización estadística de flujos de tráfico. Así que, Tomás, cuando quieras. Bueno, gracias, amigo, y gracias por la posibilidad de tener una charla aquí. Bueno, quería cambiar un poco porque seguramente habéis oído muchas charlas de estimación en áreas pequeñas, pero es otro tema un poco práctico. Y como en este tema no he trabajado nunca en español, yo prefería dar la charla en inglés para que no estén en mezcla de dos idiomas. Bueno, este topic de Kovrig con mi colega Noel Krabalek, en el Department, que es físico y hace modelos de partículas, movimientos y así. Y necesitaba un estadístico para ayudarle con algunos modelos de tráfico de flujo. So the, the, the topic is uh, how to estimate the capacity of, of some inter intersection without signals uh, of a uh, very simple form of type T. So I will start uh, with, uh, with uh, introduction of the model. Then I will try to explain how do we estimate the unknown components of the models. Then I have to speak uh, and uh, say something about so-called C-log function, which is used for capacity estimation and how to approximate this, this function. And at the end, I will present some uh, proposal how to estimate the capacity and uh, illustrate it with some real examples. So the situation is very simple. We have uh, intersection of type T size. Here we have some main stream, main road, and this is the side road with the sign of uh, yield the right or something like that. How is it called in English? And uh, so now we would like to calculate capacity of the side road. How many vehicles in one hour can enter the mainstream? Uh, so here we have so-called time pre-run. So this is time distance between the rear bumper and the front bumper of the two cars. So this we will call uh, time pre-run between two cars. And the driver on the middle street wants to enter the discrete runs. So one random variable which we will use in our model is random variable x, which is the random variable which describes the time clearance between two vehicles. And now the driver here makes some choice of time and say, okay, if the if the clearance is bigger than my limit, I enter. If not, I do not enter. So this is the decision rule. Uh, in the models of the capacity estimation, it is assumed if the first driver enters the, enters the clearance, then at the same moment, the second one is prepared to do the same. So, so uh, in the models of, of uh, the use of engineer practice, now they assume that the critical gap, so-called critical gap, this is the time the drivers wants to enter or not, is a constant. But this is not very, very, very uh, good uh, description. So we propose to model this critical gap again as a random variable. This means that different drivers have different values. Uh, in, the, in, the, in the extreme case, if you go there and you go there tomorrow with different mood, you can get different. Time. So we would like to model it like a random variable. So we have two random variables. One is the time clearance, and the second one is the, the time in the head of the, of, the, of the driver, which is the critical gap, if to enter or not to enter. So this is basically the, the, the situation. And uh, so we have some gap acceptance procedure, so-called. So if the clearance is smaller than the critical gap of the first driver, the first driver do not enter, and the acceptance order is set to zero. So no car has entered to the, to the clearance. And then we can continue. If the x is greater than y1, but is less than y1 plus y2, 
when the first one entered and the second one not. That means that the acceptance order is one, the clearance was accepted by exactly one vehicle, and so on, till we arrive to some end. This means that uh, the elf driver didn't enter, and then we have the acceptance order equal to L minus one. So in fact, the model has three, three components. The first component is the distribution of the clearances on the main street, which has been set G. The second component is distribution of critical gaps on the side road in the head of the rivers with density H, and then the above described uh, acceptance rules. And now, uh, what will be really important uh, in the application, we need to calculate the distribution of clearances which were accepted by exactly K vehicles. So we have the distribution of, of clearances, but we would like to calculate the distribution of clearances which are accepted by exactly K vehicles. So uh, what this event means? This means that the X, the clearance of the main street, was bigger than K drivers could enter, but the key plus one didn't enter. So this is the condition describing this event uh, with the name uh, in the in the sense of the random variables. If we simplify it with the notation and we denote this sum by z, then this is the condition. And now, because we assume that all the random variables are independent for now, we know that the distribution of z is in fact convolution of the uh, of the k distribution of h. So we, we can calculate density. The density of z is convolution of k functions h. So we know we know the distribution. And what we do know, what we uh, want to calculate is distribution of x given this condition. So this will be really important. So to do so, we do some change of uh, variables. So we, calculate, we put u as x, v as x minus z, and w as z plus y, k plus one minus x. And using the theorem of, uh, of uh, transformation of variables, we obtain the joint density of the new variables, u, v, w, with some domain, which is represented here. And now, uh, with this notation, the condition that the clearance was accepted by exactly chi vehicles changed and can be explained in this way that v is greater than zero and v, w is greater than zero, because v greater than zero means x, uh, x uh, greater than z. And the second one means that x is less than z plus the negative driver. So these are uh, the conditions, but written in a much more feasible way. And now, in fact, we are looking for a conditional distribution of u given this condition. So distribution of the clearance if it was accepted by exactly k vehicles. And now the situation is clear. We, have, uh, we would like to calculate the conditional density, but we have the joint one, so this is just some calculus. And if we do it, we arrive to this formula, the density of uh, clearances accepted by exactly k vehicles can be written like this, some normalization constant, and this is the function g. So as you can see, this is some multiple integral, and this is a convolution of k, of a density, so it's quite a complicated thing. But, for example, if we assume both distribution gamma gamma, we are able to derive the explicit formula, so it can be calculated in the end. Okay, also I, I mentioned one thing. What is this? This is probability that this event occurred. So what is in the denominator? It's exactly the probability that clearance will be accepted by exactly k vehicles. This I will use in the future. Okay, so we have the model, and now how to estimate the components. So I need somehow to estimate the two densities, G and H. I will work in parametric approach, and to illustrate our proposed ways how to, how to estimate it, I will present and illustrate uh, the methods on three data sets. So we have three data sets from Germany, two are from München and one from Dresden. This is the sample sizes. Which means the sample, so this is the sample size means how many times clearances on the main wrong was measured. 
And uh, from the data set, they are quite big data sets, but I will consider for now only two variables. The first one will be the time clearance measured on my round, so this one between vehicles consecutive, and the corresponding acceptance order, KI, which means that uh, KI vehicles accepted this clearance, only these two numbers. So the time and the number of cars that entered this, this, uh, this clearance. So uh, what will follow? So first of all, I would like to present so-called gate distribution, generalized inverse Gaussian distribution. I know if you have seen it sometimes, so I would like to present this distribution. And then in two steps, how to estimate the clearance on the main round, the distribution, and how to estimate the distribution of critical gap on the mineral round. So generalized inverse Gaussian distribution, I will call it gig, gig distribution. So random variable X has gig distributions with three parameters, alpha, beta, lambda, if it has this form. So this is the form of density. A is normalizing constant, which is given here. Well, terrible formula with maximal function of order A. So this is sometimes called uh, okay, maximal function of order A. You can see here that it's not so complicated. Um, different. In fact, if beta is zero, we have gamma distribution. Yeah. I, I can I cannot touch it. Yes. <laughs> if beta is zero, we have gamma distribution. So gamma distribution is one special case of this of this density. And what is important for us is this parameter beta, e to the minus one over x, because this term makes the distribution or density to be close zero near zero. And this is important because, you know, uh, the clearances between the cars have the, prop the, the property that uh, the drivers try to be available to them. So there's a minimum distance you want to maintain over time. So we need the density which is zero near zero and can be a so-called so plateau. And important thing is that this distribution didn't, didn't fall from sky. And my colleague used some physical model. If they model some one-dimensional particles of interacting of interacting particles, and if you assume that there is some repulsive force between the particles, and the order of the force is one over distance, then this distribution appears from physical model. So it corresponds to the moving objects and to measuring the distance between them. So this is not nothing that has three parameters that is good. It has also some physical background to be here, and uh, it is uh, it is member of so-called uh, balanced distribution, which are this is a special kind of distributions which have exponential tail and they have the plateau and zero. I will show it in, in, on the next slide, and it demonstrated to fit very well to traffic data, to data from highways, to data from crossroads, from from trees and so on. So we will assume this distribution as the basic model for the for clearances on the main round. Okay, so this is the distribution, and now back to our model. So I need to estimate the two densities. So we assume, let's start with the clearance distribution on the main round, which is the most, the more easy way. So we would like to estimate the distribution, but the time clearances we can directly observe. So we have the we have the observation, so this is no problem. In fact, we calculate just maximum number of estimators, we obtain the parameters. So I have put in the formula for, for applying the group, but I think it's not to be to be commented. So if I assume the three data sets, then we get such parameter estimates. You can see the alpha in this case is not almost important, it's almost zero. These are, the, these are the other parameters. To see how it fits the data, we are two figures. So let's start with the first one. So this is data set one, data set two. For the third one is the same, so I will not present it. So what we can see, the gray histogram, these are the real data. This observed, the observed nuances on the main route. Then what actually the engineers use in the practice is that they assume that the distribution is exponential. Why? Because it's very easy to work with it and everything they have formulas, very nice. But you can see that this is completely not the case. And again, the exponential has big probability near zero, and this is completely opposite. We need to know, we need to have. 
The second more complicated model, the blue one is the gamma, which fits much more better, but there are still some problems. And the gig distribution fits very well to data. And here you can see the plateau and the zero. So this is the term uh, beta over x in the exponent in the exponent. So it makes that in fact each limit, if I limit, uh, if I do limit of the density divided by x to power n for all n limit is zero in this point at zero. So we can see that the gig very well uh, fit the uh, real data. So in fact, we have the first part of our model. We have the gig distribution with its parameters. Now, the much more complicated thing. Now we would like to estimate or found some estimate of the density of the critical gap on the mineral. But now we are in a completely different situation because the time clearances we were able to measure. But now, critical gap is something which appears in the head of the dryer, and we are not able to measure that in any way. Why? Because if we can, we can measure that the dryer accepted reruns of five seconds. But we know what was this limit. If it was seven or, or three or two, we do not know. So we measure only that he needed five seconds to enter, but we do not know the number, the his limit, the critical gap. So this is not possible to measure this. So how to estimate the density? So fortunately, we can do some circle and to, do it, to look, at it, look at it from the other side. What we can detect, what we can measure is so-called sample acceptance ratio. So uh, I don't know here. The A is the set of all clearances. So this is the number of all clearances, and this is the number of clearances accepted by exactly K vehicles. So in fact, I have proportions, how many percent of uh, clearances were accepted by zero, by one, by two, by three cars. So this can be measured from the data. So this we have. And now we can take uh, the advantage of our model that under the model, we are able to calculate the probability that the clearance will be accepted by exactly k vehicles, which is this formula presented before. So we have formula for the theoretical probability that the clearance will be accepted by k vehicles. So, in fact, this delta k, capital delta k, are in fact the theoretical counterparts of the sample acceptance ratio delta k, because this is this is the true value. And if we if we use the law of, of uh, the law of large numbers, it follows that the empirical delta should converge in probability to this theoretical delta. So this is just uh, a law of large numbers, and and so they should be clear. They, they should be uh, uh, they should be uh, very similar in in values for for big n. And we will use this property for, for calculating or for estimating the density of the, of the critical gap. So we use this property. So the procedure is following. Let us assume that the distribution of critical gaps of the minor row has some density with some parameter. So we have some unknown parameter theta and we have parametric model. Then from the traffic data, we are able to get the density G of the, of the reances on the main road. This we already have, for example, for one of the data sets, and we obtain the sequence of sample acceptance ratio delta k. So this we have already at our disposal. And since the density H directly influences, we can see it here, the delta k are calculated with the H. And this is the convolution of H of K densities. So very small change of H means very big change of delta. This is this this was uh, empirically studied. So we can detect the density or the parameters of the density by trying to put this data as close as, as possible to the empirical measured values delta k. And this is the idea. So we calculate the estimates of theta by this formula. So we minimize the absolute the L1 L1 uh, norm of the, of the two vectors of the observed frequency of proportions and the theoretical probabilities. So this is one possibility how to look inside the head of the driver. In fact, we see this is the first time 
we didn't find anything like this in the literature. This is the first time try, trying to look inside what is happening there. So again, back to our three data sets. So we have already time period distribution estimated. And again, I will assume that the critical gap distribution will be again gig. So the same thing like before, we need the plateau because the driver will not select very short time. We need a plateau and the gamma is included. So this is good, good very general distribution for, for positively valued random variables. So again, we assume gig. And with the procedure described, we are able to estimate these parameters and the parameters described are here for the three crossroads, for the three uh, intersections. And now you can see that there are three different intersections, two different cities, but the parameters are very, very similar. Like uh, all the German drivers have similar characteristics and they differ too much the parameters. What is interesting is this expected value because then at the end you will see the nowadays methodology use concrete one value as critical grid, as critical gap. So we can then compare this calculated from data and the one which is calculated with the methodology values. It will be about 4.3 seconds from the methodology, and we have something a little bit bigger than, than, than the methodology says. Okay, so in this sense, we are able to estimate parameters of the distribution of the size of it. So now we have complete model of the data. So let us only see how the model works. So uh, I will compare it with uh, simulated data. So from the model, we generate the same number of clearances as was in the original data set, which means around 30,000. We calculate the acceptance orders. So we, we make some simulation game and trying to enter the, the drivers from the middle row and we obtain the the number scan. And uh, from the generated data, we calculate the sam sample acceptance ratio, we know it here as delta K model, which are artificial data, and I compare it with the uh, ratios from the real data set, delta K, de delta, delta K. So again, here we can see the comparison, three data sets, the empirical number and the number from the model and data. So it can be seen that it works very well, at least in the sense of acceptance ratios, the model model very well the, the real data sets for in, in all three cases. Maybe a little bit more interesting comparison would be in this histograms. These histograms uh, are histograms of accepted uh, clearances of order zero. This means these are clearances that were not accepted by any vehicles. The cyan color are the empirical data. The other one, I don't know, rose or violet color are uh, this histogram of our model data. So we can see it corresponds quite well. If we increase the K, so for example, here we have clearances accepted by exactly two vehicles from the empirical data and from our simulated data. And it, it seems it corresponds very well. The only thing what is possible to see, we are moving a little bit. But it, it can be explained quite easily because, you know, we, we didn't assume any dependence on the mineral road. We have everything independent. And of course, the drivers, one depends on the, on the previous one. So some dependence there is. But even if we assume independence, it seems that we are able to describe the reality quite well with the model data. Okay, so the second, the second data set, so it, it seems very, very similar. Okay, so one of the benefits of the proposed model is that so far the critical gap was considered to be a fixed constant. And now we uh, do not take it constant, but we suppose it is a random variable with some distribution. So here is illustration on the first data set. So the blue line is the estimated D density from the critical gap. And this critical gap here, this is the theoretical value which is used by the methodology of the Ministry of Transportation nowadays. So we can see what is the reference that this uh, one number, which says that each driver has the same value was, uh, was substituted by this uh, density function. 
Here can it be seen how it is unreal. So the left, the left histogram is histogram of non-accepted clearances. So this is from the real data, clearances which were not accepted, and again the critical gap. So you can see here that there are clearances that were not accepted, even if they are bigger than the critical time gap. And even more, it can be possible to see here, this histogram is histogram of clearances accepted by one vehicle. And again, the critical gap. So here, there is a lot of clearances that were accepted, that were, that were not accepted, uh, pardon, they were accepted by one vehicle, but the clearance is smaller than the critical gap. So in the original model, this should be non-accepted. And uh, another possibility what we can see here, consider the times which uh, where, where it starts to be accepted, it's around two seconds. So this is the less, less clearance which was accepted. And in, in our model, look here, this density starts to, 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 to grow up in, in, in two seconds. So it corresponds very well to, to the real data. Also, this is the uh, beginning of the shortest clearance which is accepted. So, so we have a model. We, we are able to estimate these parameters and we are able to generate uh, artificial data which mimic very well the, the real situation. And now, how to estimate the, in, the capacity of an intersection of this type? So a key concept is so-called Siegel function. Siegel function is such a function where to explain, it's important to see, to see what is the variable nt. Whereas nt is the variable which denotes the number of minor stream vehicles which accept the time clearance of size t. So this is nt. This is number of vehicles which accepts clearance of size t. So in fact, this is expectation of the variable nt, nothing more. So Siegel function is the expected value of vehicles that will accept the clearance of size t. This is all. And if we have this function, then there is a famous formula, so-called uh, using the Siegel function to calculate our capacity of, uh, of this intersection. And the formula is this one, the capacity is estimated like intensity of the of the stream so this is this means this is the number of vehicles per hour which pass there and then we have integral of the density of the clearances of the main room multiplied by this Siegel function so this we already know this can be measured or somebody give it to us the intensity of the of the stream this we can able to estimate so now we need the Siegel function as soon as we have some approximation of Siegel function we are able to estimate the capacity Okay, again, the important part here is that under our model, we are able to derive explicit formula of the signal function. So the expectation has this form, again, density H, its convolution, K times, and some infinite sum. So this is some formula which can be derived. And as uh, I mentioned before, if we use gamma gamma distribution, we are able to derive to explicit end. We have gig already know, because this is very complicated. So with gig distribution, it's not possible, we need to use some numerical approximation. But for gamma, we are able to calculate this till the end. So we have explicit, explicit uh, formula for signal function. Okay. okay, how this signal function is approximated now in practice? So it is approximated by piecewise linear function of this form, just zero and then line, where we have some threshold. This is zero before the threshold, and then this is uh, a line. So the engineers try to estimate the parameters A, B, and to put the line there. I'm sorry. <laughs> OK. So I would like to show you how nowadays the engineers estimate the line and what we propose to do. So simulation experiment. So I use gamma gamma distribution because for this distribution, we have explicit form of the function to be able to work with the exact function. Again, the parameters were taken so that the gamma gamma fits the, model, the data one. So this, these parameters are not artificial, they are they taken from, from real data. And I simulate 300 independent realizations of the free runs 
and acceptance order. This simulated data you can see here in the form of the trade process. Means, for example, this cross means the time pre-runs of approximately 10 seconds was accepted by two by two vehicles. So these are the data simulated, or this can be measured in the practice. And now, what do the engineers now? So they take these gray lines, they calculate the mean of the line, and then they put a regression. But this is completely wrong, because you can see the red line. The red line is the exact form of simple function. So it has clear asymptotes, so the approximation of the linear line is okay, but the, the coefficients are completely wrong. And the, what is the reason? The reason is the following, because if we get back to the definition of Siegel function, the expectation is taken for fixed t. So it's taken in the, in the, in the direction of y-axis, in this direction of expectation. But the engineers take it in this direction, completely opposite way. So how to, how to make it better? OK, so we have to take expectation in this form. What does it mean? We just do linear regression. What is linear regression? For fixed x, we model the expectation of y. So this is another thing. Very, very simple modification to say to the engineers, do not calculate any means and put the regression line through the origin data. And it is. So we have tried to do this. So next figure is the same figure, but I put there two, two more estimates. The first one. The black line is the linear regression. And since uh, this can be also viewed as counts, so we have also used uh, zero inflate Poisson regression model with, with uh, identity function. And you can see that both these models estimate very well the sequel function. So the true one is the red one on the simulated data. These are our estimates. And this is the original estimate which is used now in practice. And it's very simple change. Only say them, do not calculate the means. Skip one step and everything starts to work. So to, to illustrate it a little bit more, so this is not a simulated data, this are real data from data set one. So again, we can see the gray crosses, the actual estimation, and these are linear regression and zero inflate Poisson regression. So there is quite a big difference, and this influences the integral a lot. So the capacity is the estimate of capacity is really influenced by bad uh, estimation of the single function. So very simple way how to how to how to fix this. So now I would like to uh, summary do a summary of the proposed modifications with respect to the actual used methods. So first thing, we replace the exponential distribution of time clearances by the gig distribution, which fits the data much better. Second, we replace the fixed value of the critical gap by a random variable. And the third thing, we improve the estimating of the single function by uh, reducing one step of the, of the procedure. So these are three new points. And now we can see some uh, results and some capacity estimation, how, how we uh, estimate the capacity using our model. So uh, what we get from data? So from, from data, we can get the traffic intensity on the main road, it means number of vehicles per hour. Then we are able to estimate the density of the time clearances. This is the distribution. And we can approximate the signal function, just linear regression through the crosses. So we have three, this, all this we can get from data, and then just we have to numerically integrate this formula and we obtain capacity estimate. So this is how to do it in our model. And I would like to compare uh, the results of this, of this uh, proposal with the methodology which is now official in Czech Republic and she's called TP188 methodology from Ministry of uh, Transport. And in fact, uh, it was approved in 2018, and this copy of methodology from Germany, in fact, it's only with small modifications. So how this methodology works? So as inputs, they need the traffic intensity and 85% quantile of the velocities on the main road. And they calculate, using some formulas, the critical time gap, which is the constant, 
and they have some some formula like this some constant some uh, some coefficient and the, the quantile of velocities and for example for data set one we obtain something like 4.3 seconds so this is some formula which was empirically obtained somewhere nobody knows where then they have something more than our model subsequent time gap this is uh, distance between the vehicles on the mineral road so in our model this doesn't take any sense and then they have a formula for capacity this is just presented there without any proof without any revolution so if we were trying to get this formula we have realized that they use only exponential distribution and constant critical gap and then such formula arises okay and here are the results so here we can see the capacity calculated with respect uh, with the malware's technology and methodology this is our model capacity and this is a real capacity of the crossroad or the three data sets how can we get the real capacity the data are measured under so-called saturated state this means that the data are valid only if there is still at least one car on the mineral road. If there is not, they take the data out, or they they select period of time of the day when there is a big traffic on the mineral road to assegure the saturated state. Okay, if we have saturated state, then we have exactly how many vehicles entered into the main room in one hour. So we have real capacity. And this is our estimate, this is the real capacity, and this is the overestimate. It's known, it's overestimating, everybody knows it. So it can be seen that we have improved a lot from the Nowhere's methodology. But, my but, but, somebody could complain here because, you know, the methodology used only these numbers and calculated it. And I used the data. And from the data, I took the estimation. So I have much more information, in fact. So to be more correct, I would like to move it forward and to propose another procedure, a little bit modified, to be able to compete with the methodology. So only four numbers were entered, no data, and we would like to estimate the capacity. Okay? So we will use the same as in the methodology, the intensity on the main round. We will use median of, of uh, velocities. We will use critical time gap, which was calculated in the methodology, this number. And we need more, some average vehicle length. So again, the engineers have tables, and we know that in the traffic, there is 10% of buses, 10% of cyclists, and so on. So we can calculate average length of the, of the vehicle. So this can be obtained before. For example, if you want to design some intersection, this number somebody gives you before, the expected intensity, and so on. So, we have these inputs. And with these inputs, I would like to estimate the capacity with our model. So what we have to do? First, we have to estimate somehow the parameters of the gig distribution on the main road. And I didn't put the formulas here because I didn't know if I have enough time, but I would like to, I would like, I will try to explain it. From the physical model and from analysis of a lot of uh, data sets, the co my colleague obtained a formula which can, if you use intensity and the velocity, then you can obtain the parameter beta of the gamma distribution. And parameter beta of gamma distribution normalized to expectation one. So in fact, if we look back into back time, sorry, to show you this, we have seen that the parameters, this one almost zero. So we do a simplification. We put alpha zero. And then from the physical models, we can obtain a formula that to the intensity gives beta for normalized density. So in fact, we have all information. And the lambda, we calculate so that, that we, re we rescale the distribution so that the average time we run corresponds to the intensity again. So we can get with a use of for physical formula concrete beta for expectation one, so the lambda can be calculated. If we fix alpha zero, then we are able to strictly say this is the distribution which corresponds to this intensity and this velocities. So this is the first step. So this can be done. From these numbers, we are able to 
arrive to some upper to some weak distribution. Second, on the minor rock. So this is more critical point, but as you have seen, uh, there were not much differences between between the weak distribution on the on the side row. They were almost all the same. So what we do now, it means it means some more uh, some more uh, investigation. But what we do, we take the estimated gamma from our data sets as a payload distribution, and what we do, we rescale it so that it corresponds to this critical gap. So we have one uh, one uh, one distribution which is like a representant of the behavior of the of the drivers of the side road, and we only rescale it to this to this schema. And as soon as we have these two these two densities, then is the situation is simple. We generate data from our model, we estimate the signal function, and we calculate the intersection capacity. So we are able with these four values do some procedure. Okay. And the results are this. So again, we can see the nowadays technology methodology, the real capacity, and the estimate obtained by simulating the data from the estimated densities based on four numbers. So from four numbers, we can arrive to these to this, uh, results. So again, it's a bit worse than before, but again, if we compare it with the nowadays numbers, it's much, much better than before. Okay, and some uh, some uh, real example without uh, without data. So this is like it works in practice. You have some crossroad, and you want to estimate its capacity before it's constructed, for example. So uh, this is uh, an example from the methodology of the, of the Ministry of Transportation. So there is I don't know 120 pages of methodology, and then there are some illustrative examples. So we took one of them to show them how different results we obtain. So this is one concrete crossroad uh, uh, intersection in Czech Republic, and we are going to try to calculate capacity of the stream six. This is the right turn as, as before. So if we use the methodology of the ministry, they use intensity, 500 vehicles per hour, and they use this media, this quantile of, of, of velocities, 40 kilometers per hour. So it is something somebody has to give you before these numbers. With respect to the methodology, we calculate the critical gap, which is about 4.3 seconds. From our data, we get something like 4.7. So it's quite, quite, quite close. For our model, we take the same intensity, we take the median of speeds, we take the same critical gap as was calculated above, and we take some from the tables we took uh, average vehicle line. Okay, in the example, there is exactly written how many buses, how many is going there. So we know the proportions, we know average length, so this can be calculated. So in our case, we got this number of average length of the vehicle. And now, based on these inputs, we follow the proposed uh, procedure, and we have found these two distributions. So this gig on the main road, and this is the gig on the minor road. So this will uh, define our model. Then, using these densities, we simulate artificial data and uh, estimate the capacity using the single function. And again, these are the result. So as you can see, this number is again much smaller than the original one, so we can say that even in this case, the model can uh, can uh, remove the effect of overestimation of the capacity, which is known that nowadays the capacity is overestimated. Okay, so some conclusions. So we proposed a very simple, independent, probabilistic model of traffic flow with two modifications, the more general gig distribution on the main road and the critical gap considered as a random variable. Then we improved the approximation of the signal function and proposed a new procedure for estimation of capacity based on the gig model and simulated data. And from at least from the three sets uh, studied, it seems that uh, it's much, much more precise than the actual used methodology. Okay, it's all from me. Thank you.
Uh, this is time for questions and discussion. Concerning uh, this research, this was the contact with, with the Ministry of Health. Well, this was a type of project, mm -hmm. which is applied project, and the application grant was the Ministry of Transportation. Mm -hmm. And nowadays we prepare methodology for them, we won. And it seems that they will give us another proper. They are they are excited because mm -hmm. they are excited about the results. So it seems that we will obtain another grant for another four years to, to follow in this direction. Because now you know it's important. We have type T, mm -hmm. and now how to generalize this? So if I can find here, for example, now it works like this. If we you have more general crossing, oh, for example, like this. And let's say you want to go here. Then this this is the first carnage of XU. Again, this is the second carnage of XU, and this is the third carnage of XU. So what the methodology do, do, do now? They calculate this intensity, intensity one, intensity two, intensity three, and they do some weighted mixture of these intensities. And they say, okay, so if you want to go to the left, it's much more complicated than to go to the right. We have to come with these intensities and they generate some general intensity for this stream. And then they go to the T type intersection and halfway capacity. So in fact, all the methodology for all the type of crossroads can be improved only by changing the T type. But now the question is how they got this weighted intensity. And there is a lot of place to do research with the data and to, to check how it works and so on. So there is a lot of uh, ways that we can continue with this. And concerning uh, the computation of, of the results, uh, the, the, I, I, uh, let's say your, your approach uh, needs uh, some, some simulation, mm -hmm. some resampling. And, but I guess this is not a big problem. No, you mm -hmm. once generate 30,000 numbers mm -hmm. and you have it. Mm -hmm. And if you study the deviation several times, it's almost nothing. Mm -hmm. So this looks nice. No, and, the, and the capacity we are preparing the application for mm -hmm. engineers. There are two, there are, in fact, there are two options to prepare an application where you put four numbers mm -hmm. and you prepare capacity or to present tables. You know? mm -hmm. And I have calculated tables. I don't know. It was about ten thousand point. It, it was about ten minutes to calculate ten thousand capacities. But the time is no problem. Okay, thank you. Any any more questions? Then mm -hmm. thank you very much. Yeah, uh, very much. Okay. Okay.